Thank you for joining today's webinar on wool traceability. I'm Jodie Rizzo O'Brien. I'm, I'm part of the Sheep Connect team. Um, this webinar is supported by Australian Wool Innovation, the South Australian Sheep Industry Fund, and the Department of Primary Industries. You can find out more about Sheep Connect at our website, or you can follow us on Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our speaker today is Mark Scott. Mark is the Program Manager for Woolmark Certification and Traceability. In his role, Mark is exploring the emerging traceability technologies to optimise transparency and integrity along this wool supply chain, with the goal of driving value back to Australian wool growers. Mark has an agricultural science background, and prior to mo moving to work on traceability with Woolmark, he worked in the AWIs on farm-focused projects. At this time, I'll hand over to Mark, who will talk about wool traceability. Thanks, Mark. All righty. Um, so thanks, thanks, Jody, for the the opportunity to speak and um, for the for the inter introduction. Uh, so as, as Jody said, I, I work um, along the wool supply chain um, in, the, in the traceability portfolio for, for AWI and Woolmark, um, with the aim of increasing transparency and and ultimately driving value uh, back to Australian wool growers. Um, I've a, a history of on farm uh, focused projects, so. The key project I used to work on was um, the lifetime new management project, and so I've spent quite a quite a number of uh, years working on farm with growers. Uh, most of you will be familiar with Woolmark and AWI, but um, just in the off chance that there's someone on there that's not, uh, we're, we're we're the RDC uh, for the wool industry, so the research, development, marketing body. Uh, we work across. The, the globe on behalf of Australian wool growers that fund the company. Uh, the Woolmark brand represents a commitment between wool growers, brands and consumers for the authenticity and quality of a fibre that connects us all. So what am I here to talk to you about today? Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to go through uh, the, the Woolmark and AWI touch points on, on the value chain, uh, open up on, on why we're investing in traceability, I talk about where the WoolQ platform fits in on that, um, and also where else we're investing in the space. So this, this slide shows where AWI has touch points across the globe. Uh, we work through the supply chain from on-farm right through to consumer to make wool growing easier and, and ultimately more profitable. Uh, we, we innovate with new ideas on farm, uh, innovate with new fabrics and designs, uh, and work to sell wool ultimately to a consumer who is increasingly wanting a renewable, biodegradable, natural fibre that's modern and versatile and friendly to the planet. Uh, we work with hundreds of organisations, um, all, all working together to so people, more people choose wool, uh, more people grow wool, um, choose to join the wool industry uh, and ultimately choose to buy wool as, as no one sells any wool until a uh, consumer purchases wool. Our traceability investments aim to leverage all the positive outcomes uh, from, the, from the hard work at each of those stages of the supply chain, but particularly those producing um, the raw fibre, the wool growers. Uh, and, and we as a company, we have a, a technical team of experts um, that work across these fields. Um, and, and why do we have this? We have it because we know there's consumer demand um, you know, I've got various stats on, on consumer demand here on the page. 75% of, of consumers in, in key consumption countries view sustainability as extremely or very important. Uh, we know they're worried about their environmental impact of their purchases. Uh, when it comes to clothing, they want reassurance they're ta taking part in alleviating the world's problems, not adding to them. Uh, they want fabrics that are breathable, adaptive to seasons and occasions, but are also natural, clean and gentle on the, on the environment. And there's a lot of synthetics out there vying for market dominance. So uh, you know, with traceability, it's important that we help consumers identify what's authentic and what's natural. Um, positively, a quality, eco-friendly fibres are now seen as uh, an investment by consumers with nearly 40% choosing to switch from their preferred brand to another that aligns with their values. So I think all of this puts wool in a fantastic position. And, and, and really, uh, we're, we're the original eco-fibre. Um, we, 
cotton and synthetic fibers are, are the most widely used and, and produced fibers globally. I think wools you know, sits between 1.5 to 2% of the global textiles. Uh, but to produce 100 sweaters, wool uses 18% less energy than polyester, 70% less water than cotton. Uh, it's 100% it's biodegradable and doesn't contribute to microplastics. And, and they're among the oldest in the wardrobe. From a wardrobe study we funded at AWI, we know wool garments last and, and people pass them on. Um, we, we know it's the most reused and recycled fibre, um, giving, giving wool, multiple, uh, wool products multiple lives. And, and something that's not really captured, but I, I think it's important um, if, if we're looking at um, sustainability, um, is, is wool supports hundreds of thousands of livelihoods from, from Australian wool growers uh, right across the global textile supply chain. Uh, and so traceability, we're working in traceability to help amplify these stories and these positive messages. So, so what are we doing? Um, our strategy sort of involves three pillars. Uh, one, market access for Australian wool. So we're out to educate and inspire brands and consumers to preference Australian wool. Uh, at higher prices as well. Uh, we want to help Australian wool growers tell their best story to brands and consumers uh, and provide tools for the wool supply chain to tell their story to their consumers. Uh, we want to lead by example and describe wool's real story uh, and exploit those, those known advantages that I just touched on before um, over the less sustainable fibres. We want to meet market demands and take full advantage of those shifting priorities um, of, of brands and, and their consumers um, uh, towards stories of provenance and ethical supply chains. Uh, that is backed by immutable traceability. And, and risk mitigation. So we want to maintain the relevance of Australian wool in, a, in, in quite a crowded and competitive environment. Uh, we want to have the ability to respond to market uncertainty through identification of Australian wool in supply chains. So, so that's moving out of just the, the provenance and, and marketing and storytelling uh, more into the regulatory requirements for proof of origin of, of product claims. And there's also uh, domestic biosecurity needs for, for enhanced traceability systems as well. So, so the outcomes and outputs uh, will be Australian wool growers can tell their stories. Uh, there's greater confidence in, in the fibre that's purchased um, that meets this, this, the description through objective specification. Uh, brands and, and wool growers leverage improved margins uh, by telling the story of Australian wool and the associated value of it. We meet those consumer needs and, and wool is recognised as the go-to. Uh, and so the output of this, so what, what we're going to have is an end-to-end -end audit trail that details the origin of wool, as well as where it's been through the supply chain using science-based and data-based technology. So I'll now delve into the projects we've got up and running here at, at AWI and Woolmark. They, they work across both companies. Uh, and, and the key investment that underpins it all is WoolQ. Um, so for those that don't know, WoolQ is a digital platform. It's built for wool growers to manage their wool production data, tell their wool growing stories and offer a modern electronic way to sell wool um, all through their broker. There's really two parts of WoolQ. There's the WoolQ market aspect, which uh, gets, often gets a lot of attention. Um, and then there's the, the WoolQ data capture or, or it could be WoolQ, called WoolQ trace um, capture, which I'll, I'll, I'll I'll focus on today. Um, and, and when I talk about that, I'm really talking about three key parts of the WoolQ network. And, and that's the eSpecy, um, my WoolQ, which is where all the data is, is stored and captured within the portal for the wool grower, and the industry network. So what WoolQ can provide uh, are the first steps of building traceability up at, and down the supply chain. Um, so if we look at the e-species by capturing data at the beginning of the wool data journey um, in an electronic way, it makes it possible to follow data from, from shed uh, to broker uh, through to testing uh, and to sale. 
And so this, this slide that you can see there is, is the mechanisms that are, are set up within an industry. This is how it's set up now um, for wool grower to, uh, wool queue, sorry, to connect to those existing um, wool trade platforms. So, so the data trails there. What this creates is a foundation for Australian wool to, to ready, readily connect to other traceability systems in, in a much more streamlined way. Uh, wool can be traced at the moment, but it's, uh, it's all about improving the mechanisms for it to be traced. So we know there's a lot of paperwork between shed to port and WoolQ has the ability to package and provide that information. Beyond the data capture from SPECI level, there's also uh, information that can be captured within the WoolQ portal that's, that's inputted there um, by the wool grower. Uh, so here I've got some screenshots. It's, it's a demonstration of, of what it looks like within the portal when a, when a wool grower is setting up your, their business profile. Um, by the stage you get to now, they've, they've moved past all the general details about their business. They've added their, their partners and users, um, their, the brokers and the classes. And, and we've got a sustainability um, uh, section here now where wool growers can nominate what they do for their land, their animal and their people management, as well as what quality assurance schemes they're a part of. We're working more closely with quality assurance schemes to discuss the ability to link in with the platform and verify what wool growers are doing. And ideally we'd like to highlight to growers where they might fit the criteria of, of available quality schemes and offer a path of connection. Now this, this feature of the platform is flexible. Uh, we're, we're not here to tell wool growers uh, what to say or do, but we want to provide a platform for them to be able to share what they do if they wish to do so. Uh, I've had some good suggestions come through uh, recently, including on, on the lifetime you management project I, I used to work on um, to allow wool growers to, to badge and label all the industry courses they've done. So it, it's really flexible and, and, and wool growers can essentially input what they want there. This moves uh, us to the, the industry network. And this is a directory where those wool grower profiles can be found. Um, and and the only businesses that will be found there are those that have opted in to displaying on the, on the profile. So for example, there's, there's 800 business profiles created on the WoolQ platform and, and 730 of them have opted into being displayed in this industry network. There's wool growers, there's classes, there's brokers. Uh, there's now one wool processor on there and we will actively uh, promote this to processors up the supply chain. And there's groups on there and those groups vary from quality assurance schemes uh, to grower groups. Uh, it, it can be uh, any, any, any group that's part of the Australian wool industry can go on there and, and form a group. Um, ultimately, we see this as somewhere Woolmark licensees could go to um, and, and find inspiration from grower stories and uh, connect to those wool grower brokers or, or wool processors that source wool from those growers. This steps us inside uh, a WoolQ profile. Um, this is a South Australian brand that has uh, done a lot of hard work to, to really profile themselves to up, up to industry. Um, and, and I'll go into a little bit more detail on them uh, later on, but it's just an example of the profile. And you could also, if they were selling wool on the, on the profile, you could see what wool there is for sale and, and the trade would see that as well. So moving on from wool queue, uh, which is the, the foundation piece for, for electronic traceability, I'll move to some of our other current projects. And, and, and one of them, a key one is our scientific methods of, of traceability. Um, we're working with a company called Oritane. Um, so they're a New Zealand based company uh, who use isotopic science methodology uh, to get, what they call a fingerprint, um, of, of the product and, and they do this through multiple products, including food um, and fiber. And we're, we're working with a, a supply chain, another South Australian wool grower actually to, um, and, and an American brand where we're tracing wool through, through the supply chain um, and taking samples where you can see the fingerprint at each of these key stages of the supply chain. Uh, the wool's being manually tracked through the supply chain as well. So there's a, a paper order trail that we're capturing. And the, the scientific results are then cross-checked against 
our, our paper trail expectations of, of this managed supply chain. And ultimately these combined results of, of science and manual handling uh, are intended to create a, a case for us to assess um, and gauge interest in, the, in these scientific methods for traceability and, and provenance and, and how they could potentially link into the established Walmart licensing program. Uh, these samples in the supply chain have been tested and, and collected and we're, we're right up to the, the end. So we've, we've got the garments and, and we're testing them and just waiting for results. Um, I, I can say that it's, it's the results have been uh, positive uh, along the whole way. Um, it, this, this technology is um, uh, originated from criminal forensic field um, and has been used for multiple investigations. Um, it's been thoroughly peer reviewed and, and subject to numerous scientific journal publications over the last 20 years. So there's a, there's a good foundation there to, to work on. Um, and, and really promisingly, we've, we've got um, Australian brands like Country Road that are using um, Oritane to verify single source um, uh, woolen garments um, from farms in Tasmania and, and Myers also using them. So there's, there's, there's good commercial interest for this technology out there. Um, and as I say, we see it as very complementary to the current um, Woolmark licensing uh, testing mechanisms. Moving on to uh, what we call our, our blockchain platform, um, our, our blockchain investment. Um, so here we're, we're working with a, a project partner called Everledger. Um, they work across various supply chains. They're based in Brisbane, but, but have a global reach. Um, and, and really they're, they're out there to uh, verify, verify supply chains and increase transparency, uh, predominantly using their blockchain technology, but they look at other um, technologies and partnering with uh, scientific tracing technologies as well. Um, they, they've actually just recently won a grant, a $3 million grant um, from the Australian government to investigate how blockchain technology can be used to improve transparency in the Australian critical mineral supply chain. So that's, uh, can only benefit the, the, the much smaller investment Australian wool growers have, have put in with Everledger. Uh, and this, so what this project set out to do is build an electronic chain of custody tool for the, for the Australian wool industry. Uh, we're looking to trace the, the wool journey from farm to end consumer. And we're also going back down the supply chain as well. So we're starting with the length of fabric and seeing uh, how we can use this technology to uh, verify the journey back. Uh, it's a secure environment backed by blockchain um, for the sharing of this key data. Uh, we're looking to identify and capture the necessary documentation and, and standardized data at each stage in, in line with industry best practice. So, so what that means is we are, uh, we're, we're out to just understand what, what are the critical data points uh, we need to verify wool journeys and, and make it more seamless for when we wanna do it in future. Uh, we're also looking at ways to record evidence and analytics to demonstrate sustainability, compliance and best practices at, at different stages. So uh, that, that relates to information that can be generated on farm for wool growers, um, uh, information from wool processes on on their energy efficiency, their water use, um, and, and brands and the makeup of the, the garment at the end as well. So this blockchain uh, platform ultimately um, all ties into the, the value proposition of, of the Walmart licensing program um, and, and also improving the ability of those growers who wanna share those stories, their stories to do so in a, a more efficient manner. Um, if you look at the, the wheel on the left-hand side of the slide here, we've got uh, WoolQ up on the sort of top right, um, and it has a direct links to our traceability initiatives um, that if we think back to that foundation piece I was talking about earlier, um, it, it shows the role here that by uh, connecting through um, what we call an API to the Everledger platform, WoolQ can provide that data uh, from SPECI through to port. Um, and then if you see the shaded blue area, we've got touch points for the Woolmark licensing program where we collect data with our, our uh, Woolmark licensees that, that pay money to be a licensee. Uh, so this project is a proof of concept. It's, it's not going to be live and, and running um, tomorrow. It's, 
uh, we're, we're collecting data, um, we're, we're collecting information from the participants to, to understand what they think of the use, how easy it is to use, um, if they're interested in using such a, a, a platform going forward. Uh, in, in a future state, and, and actually with one of the supply chains that we're tracing, a Chinese brand called Uma Wong, who has a, a big footprint in China, um, there, there'll be the ability for QR codes to be scanned and information about the journey to be displayed. And, and if we think about the WallQ platform, not, not in, in this aspect, but uh, in a future state, there'll, there could be the ability to scan a QR code and, and pull up the WoolQ grower profile. Um, again, everything is permissioned. Um, so growers that, that want to be a part of this can uh, use the platform and tick the box that they want to display their profiles on the network. Uh, and then there would be the next tier to display beyond that. Um, and those that don't just can opt not to show that. Um, where, as I said, we're in a proof of concept phase. So essentially a discovery phase to, to assess industry appetite. And it, it'll be delivered by the year's end, really by the end of October, we'll be um, finished all the development work for this project. Um, and, and we're looking to prevent duplication and, and seize collaborative opportunities. Uh, so we'll continue to provide industry updates um, and that, that's both domestically and internationally um, between now and then. And so um, I know there's a lot of other um, Australian wool industry organizations that are that are interested in this place uh, space and, and we're working with them so what does what does all this mean for for growers um, well well right now uh, wool growers can build profiles on wool queue and, and that provides the foundations to connect uh, there's already a number of quality assurance schemes that are available with traceability offerings uh, wool sold through quality assurance schemes can can secure a premium for growers but I recommend talking to your broker uh, about what opportunities are out there. Uh, we're seeing more and more brands come to us wanting to connect to wool growers, which is again, why we're acting in this space. But we're also seeing good examples of wool growers grouping together and, and looking to uh, tell their story and, 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 and make connections up the supply chain. So WoolQ can help do that, but we've got groups like um, Flinders Merino, um, that have done that and, and are using connections on, on their own accord to uh, tell their story. And, and we're, we're looking to do a bit more work with them towards the end of the year. There's also been opportunities for wool growers to be rewarded for, for their management practices. Um, now this is outside of uh, AWI funded projects, um, but, but recently we saw a wool growing enterprise sign quite a significant deal the carbon credits to um, Microsoft Corporation is, is paying them. And, and to do deals like that, it, it relies on authenticity and, and transparency traceability through supply chains um, to verify what's happening on farm. Uh, we know the Savory Institute uh, land to market program links brands back to primary producers. And the, and the positive thing about this program is that the brands are looking for on farm authentication of what's happening on farm, uh, but they're willing to pay for it. So they pay for the auditing costs. Um, and so the role I see AWI and Woolmark playing in this space is, is we're, we're out here to make, uh, to look for, for ways to make involvement easier for those that want to be involved. And, and Australian Wool Exchange um, uh, investing in this area with their uh, RFID tracing systems, um, Wool Producers Australia are investing in this space. Um, they're, they're running with the government a, a wool industry traceability a gap analysis that we're, we're uh, contributing to uh, that project. And I really encourage any wool growers who are looking to understand more that you're all welcome to get in touch with me. Um, I'll share my details at the end of the slideshow. Um, but, but really we know authenticity will be highly valued going forward in the globe. And, and I think that's great for, for wool growers because it, we have so much authenticity in our industry. So I'll finish with an example of an Australian, uh, South Australian uh, wool growing enterprise that, that have worked to connect up the supply chain. And, and then Jody, I might hand
hand back to you and I'll, I'll take any questions. I'm uh, Bruce Agars. I live on Oaklands. Our family have, has been here since 1911. I'm started with my grandfather and his brother. We're just keen, passionate merino wool growers. They've got good, good fibre on them, nice and soft. We've been breeding, sort of refining the breed, I suppose, over the years, trying to get what I call well-defined, um, soft handling um, merino wool. We're in the middle of Australia, facing the Great Australian Bight. Our southern neighbour is Antarctica. A long way away. It is unusual, yeah. So we front the Southern Ocean and all its winds and fresh air. It's probably five, six years ago now, we were talking as a family and instead of being reliant on auction prices all the time that fluctuate, uh, getting in contact with either a, a retail store or a, an end user in some fashion that would um, stabilise our, our income basically. And from there it was um, getting a brochure organised and a website organised. Focused on, on it, where we are and also our long-term family history and our love of merinos as a you know, sustainable fibre. We'd seen it in, in wine especially and some foods where people are sort of knowing more about what they're eating and drinking. So why couldn't we do it for wool? So we sort of thought, well, perhaps we can do it ourselves and, and try and tell the story from go to woe. Um, so we can market that, that fresh air merino uh, for a premium. If we can do that right and, and promote that story, then people become involved in it, wanting to know more and check out fresh air merino for themselves. So, Jody, I, I, I welcome any questions um, from from the audience now, if yeah. that's okay. Cheers, yeah. Thanks, Mark. Um, there's been a few questions that come, few questions that come through. If people have got questions, pop them in the chat box, and I'll pose them to Mark, or put them in the Q and A, and I'll pose them through. So the first one that's come through is, what types of premiums might be offered to you know your average grower in South Australia? Have you got any um, idea about that, Mark? Yeah, it's a um, it's a it's a broad question. So not unfortunately not one I can answer directly. Um, there's there's premiums um, in in the market for for lots of things. Um, I, I mentioned before there's you know types of wool people are producing or, or links in with quality assurance schemes. But I think that's if if you're after um, market premiums for greasy wool in 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 the market um you know your, your broker's really in, in a better position to answer that than me although awi do put out um market reports what what there is um what is happening is our, our brands are coming to to woolmark um we've got offices throughout throughout the globe um in the united states um in london in japan and and, and they want to secure quality wool um, first and foremost, and, and then wool with a nice um, story behind it. And, and, and Australia is, has, has a good story to tell. And so there, there, there could be uh, premiums um, that those brands are, are willing to, to pay, but it's, it's about getting our wool industry uh, in a position to easily tell those stories to attract those premiums. Um, well, this is a perfect follow on from that one. So if a grower was interested in, in setting up that supply arrangement, Mm -hmm. How do they go about it? How do they link from yep. the grower through to the big, to the, the corporates? Yep, terrific, terrific question. Um, uh, the first thing I, I would encourage you to do is is um, set up a, a profile on, on WoolQ. Um, it, like I said, it, it shows, it, it enables uh, connection or up into other traceability um, systems and uh, a, Again, speak to your your broker. We've got uh, we work with brokers across Australia, and, and they have good connections um, up up the supply chain. And and also, you please get in touch with me because we we do field inquiries um, uh, uh, from brands that are looking for those stories. So um, there's there's probably three aspects there. So a wool queue profile, 
um, get to understand the type of storytelling there, speak to your broker and, and feel free to shoot me an email as well. Here we, um, Mark, you talked about a number of quality assurance schemes. Um, and the question is, what type of schemes are out there? Yeah. Um, general terms? Yep. yep. So, so we, um, uh, we, we're working on walk you with, with various quality assurance schemes, um, having some great progress with, with sustainable, um, meetings with RWS. Um, there's, there's Nativa out there, this, uh, Alan, Alan Savory Institute land to market quality assurance scheme. Uh, and, and the brilliant thing is about these schemes is it's, there's uh, they're not um, all the same. So there might be schemes that fit a certain type of growing environment um, and uh, schemes that don't fit certain types of growing environments. So uh, there's, there's options out there for wool growers. Um, what we know is that you know, there's 60,000 Australian wool growers that all do terrific things on their farm um, and they don't need to be necessarily part of a quality assurance scheme to um, tell those stories. So that's, that's where WoolQ comes in uh, ag again. Um, and, and there's also quality assurance schemes that have tiered systems. So depending on, on, on what you do on farm, you could be eligible for, for different tiers, but um, the, the main ones and, and AWEX provide a report on, on the main ones that are, are sold through uh, the Australian wool market, but the, the likes of RWS. And, and sustainable are, are, are key ones. So Mark, those quality assurance schemes that you just talked about, they sit in the environmental credential space or are there some in other what, areas of, man, of like, you know, animal management and what sort yep, of areas yep. do they um, cover? Uh, so they, they cover, often they cover uh, multiple pillars. Um, so, so those key ones of, of, of land, uh, animals and, and, and people. Um, and, and we're finding that's what, that's what brands are interested in. That's what consumers are interested in. Um, so it's, there, there still are quality assurance schemes that, that might just deal specifically for, um, for animal welfare or um, some say, take the Savory Institute is, is more focused on, on land management uh, practices and principles. Um, but like I said before, there's, uh, options out there for, for lots of different types of wool growing enterprises. Jeez, and so ch check in with their broker if you want more information about that or where is a good source yeah, to yeah. start that journey? Yep, uh, good, good question. And, and I'm really um, <laughs> getting the brokers to, to cover a lot of this, but, but that's, that's because the brokers are, are well uh, connected. Um, brokers know the wool supply chain, um, they, they know what quality assurance schemes are out there available to growers and uh, that fit their, their growing, wool growing enterprise. Um, the quality assurance schemes, you can, those, those ones I listed before will be more than happy to talk directly to growers, I'm sure, but the brokers are, you know, they're a tremendous source of information um, for, for wool growers. Um, Mark, another question about the, you're saying this project, those projects will be wrapped up sort of later in the year, the time frame for your average wool grower to engage in a traceability program, what is that? A yeah, so, so th these, the, the blockchain project I, I was referring to before, we've, we've got those journeys that we're tracing sort of bedded down and, and we're, we're marching towards the final months of that project. Um, and, and the same goes for the Oritane project. So those two sort of, distinct and defined projects there. Uh, but there will be opportunities um, for involvement and engagement going forward. This, these investments aren't going to end just with these two projects. So uh, just, just the other day, I, I had a, a call with a, an Australian brand actually looking to uh, get more involved and, and promote uh, Australian growers. So they come to the company, uh, to us as a, as a company, because they know we you know, work on behalf of wool growers and, and can bridge connections. So, um, you know, the, the, the wool queue profile is a, a tremendous way to start and, and you know, shooting, my, my email should be up on the screen now. So shooting me an email, just yep. um, even if it's just to say, you'd like to be aware of what's happening in this space and, and see the final uh, outcomes of, of these traceability projects and, and what phase one, two, and three, or two and three might look like. Excellent. Um, question here about WoolQ. Do you want to just um, jump in 
jump back and maybe just reiterate the key advantages of full queue. Like, I guess there's a few producers, and um, I can put my hand up as one of them that sort of halfway through the chain or about to sign up, um, why people should be engaging in WillQ, if you'd like to just outline the highlights and, and what they need to do. So, you know, if we're going to engage in WillQ and do an e-speci, do I suddenly need to buy a tablet and put it in my shed for my wool cluster? Or, you know, what's the process for producers to engage in that space? Um, great, great question. Uh, so you can, you can go to woolq.com and, and register, and it's, it's quite easy to register. Um, uh, and, and that'll start you off and um, take you through the steps. But what, what I really recommend doing, and, and especially if we've got um, South Australian wool growers on the call tonight, we've got a, um, a South Australian uh, wool queue field officer, um, Andrew Dennis. That's, uh, he, Andrew, Andrew's terrific, um, knows the industry like the back of his hand and um, can spend the time coming to your property to, to talk you through the platform um, or, or set up a call to, to work, work through the various stages. And, and those stages are um, setting, setting up your profile on WoolQ so you can partner up with your broker and your classer. Um, in terms of completing the eSpecy, it can be completed um, on a desktop or in a tablet. We recommend having a tablet um, in the, the shed to, to fill out. It doesn't have to be connected to the internet. Uh, it can upload once an internet connection is, um, is found later in the day. Um, some people even, even use their phone. Um, it, it, it's a bit of a mix, but you, um, yeah, you can, if you, if you wanted to avoid buying a tablet, you can, you can avoid it and just submit it on your, your desktop. But the eSpecy, um, the, the wool queue eSpecy and, and AWEX's wool clip eSpecy are, are really, foundational pieces for um, Australian wool industry traceability systems. It's, it's that early on-farm data capture that uh, enables the ability to uh, trace wool all the, all the way up through the supply chain. W without that, it's, it's much more clunky and, and harder to do. And I think for us, when we went down that path, was also to avoid some of those errors when you're trying to read someone's handwriting. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it, it, I was quite amazed um, once I started working on on these projects when, and, and talking to Australian wool handlers, I, I think they, they estimated themselves that these species saved them, saved the industry a, a million dollars a, a year in, um, in just mistakes alone. So, you know, that even that traceability aside, um, seems like it's worth it. It's amazing, a um, million dollars a year. Yeah, 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 it's, it's quite incredible. So, look, the the, the e speci is just an, an electronic version of, of the paper speci. Um, there's there's training resources on um, online. I I know in some circumstances it's not the, the wool grower, it's the classer that's that's filling it out, and, and that can present a roadblock block in in some um, circumstances. But uh, like I said before, we've we've got resources out there to help with that, and and a key one is is our fi South Australian field officer Andrew Dennis. If anyone wants Andrew's details, um, feel free free to flick me or um, Emma and I'll send Andrew's details out to you. Um, thank you to everyone who joined us for today's webinar. Mark, I thank you for sharing your insights and expertise. Thank you for your time and have a lovely evening. Thank you very much, Jodie. Uh, thanks Sheep Connect SA and, and thank you for all the participants that joined.